subbing you is subbing. Oh, right. I don't have to sing this time. Well, my bad here. Anyway, viewers, welcome to a post-commentary of Europa Universalis 4. I'm uh, starting to point out the Muscovy colonization here, which is why you see me uh, waving the mouse around there. And yes, th in this part, I decided to go ahead and take um, exploration ideas. Uh, my reasoning for it was a little bit more long-winded during the live commentary, of course, but I figured I could get by without uh, religion or uh, religious ideas for conversion a little longer. And it it really helps to be able to colonize towards Muscovy to both engage them sooner and to block them. And so after deliberating on some of the other tech choices, which I didn't really feel were too worthwhile in my position, that's what I settled on. But as promised, I am going to go over some of the comments, some of the questions I got. First one, of course, by Holland883. Uh, will we ever get more Civ 4? And do not forget my name, otherwise you will have to sing again. Well, I will sing again anyway, even if it's a bad uh, YouTube spoof and only a couple seconds. But at least I wasn't going back to the same my name reference. Anyway, more Civ 4, huh? Geez, not in the near future. Um, I, I won't rule it out entirely, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's been like well over half a year since I've even touched Civ 4. So like for me, I, I would have to pick up some interest in the game again and practice it a little bit before I'd feel too good about Let's Playing it. Because otherwise, I would probably want to still do Immortal and I would just get blasted. And I don't know. We'll see. Uh, that's not in the near future, though, for the Civ 4. Okay, so next question by Poiler Boiler, and man, he hit me with a multi-parter. I, I swear that's uh, quite the, quite the uh, amount of questions I have here. But anyway, would you consider attacking Japan? Yes, uh, for a province to spawn religious zealots and switch to the superior Shinto to be worth it. No, <laughs> attacking Japan is very Mongol-esque. We can uh, succeed where history failed us, perhaps. And so for that reason, I have some temptation to do it. But um, Shinto is impractical. And why is it impractical? Because I would have to sell off. And yeah, I just, uh, Manchu declared uh, independence on me here. So I had to buy out some troops. Yeah, they went hostile. And when I gave them back provinces in the last part, I was worried about that. But all it happened, so we're going to have to beat them down. And they have a decent number of forces. But compared to my first war against them, it's just not going to be as challenging. So you, you can watch me triple speed it, I guess. But anyway, no. It, to be able to switch to a religion, it has to be the dominant religion in your empire. And so to conquer enough of Japan, I would have to like get through Manchu to actually get the kind of navy to do that. Drop a colony in Hokkaido, and then conquer like all of Japan before anything else. Just to get, and then sell off some provinces to my vassals. Just to be able to switch to Shinto, which then doesn't even have that good of conversion strength. Although the 10% morale boost or whatever from Shinto is nice, it's just not worth the rigor morale in, in that regard. So no, I would not consider that to be worthwhile. Um, I do have a plan regarding religion. Actually, I have two plans, even as of um, episode 6, which is quite a while from now. Um, as early as this video and continuing on from then... I'm mulling between whether I want to use Chagatai and maybe some of uh, the Kazakh slash Uzbek territory to uh, convert to Sunni, along with religious ideas. I should be able to chew through all my accepted culture provinces very readily, uh, especially if I go piety. And piety doesn't help; does not hurt with regards to uh, morale either. So yeah, I could do a, a piety Sunni. That's uh, one option. The other is to flip into Confucian. And just take the uh, idea that improves heretic tolerance. For the first time ever, heretic tolerance in 1.6 adds to your religious unity. And if you have plus 3 tolerance or more, then you will have 100% unity. In other words, it will give you just as much tax, manpower, whatever, as an accepted as your primary religion. And uh, really, with the plus 2 from Confucian, plus 2 from the base... Uh, well, plus two from the decision, plus two from the religion, and plus two from religious ideas, even with low legitimacy, which I'm not planning to run a lot with the way the horde mechanics work now, you can still get a ton of heretic tolerance. I mean, it's pretty much as good as your primary religion, and that will include Shinto. So if I attack um, Shinto provinces, 
I will be able to have them not just be uh, tolerated, but actually add to my religious unity. And here I just accept concede defeat from Manchu, who remains hostile, but I'm going to improve them to plus 200. At exactly plus 200, the AI is, it will not be hostile still, but it turns hostile very quickly now if it falls below that. But, um, you know, with that, I have the opportunity to push it up, so that's helpful. And yeah, here I see that there's an opportunity to be with Ming again, so I'm just going to go in on them. Uh, something else worth mentioning here, in the last video, I was already starting to suspect, but in this uh, video, and I've been uh, tooling about on the forums a little bit to confirm it, they altered the uh, mechanics of peace deals in 1.6, I am pretty sure. Um, essentially... You used to get scaling based on empire size, and now that is bullcrap because you no longer do. So rather than taking like 12 provinces from Ming, I was only able to take what you saw. That's going to make the Great Khan achievement considerably harder as both Ming and Muscovy will take far more wars than otherwise, and the latter is a real pain. Um, <laughs> actually, I can't wait to get to that video. I might actually do some cut editing to slow down certain parts of that war. And it's not much of a spoiler. If I'm to get this achievement, I have to fight them. And uh, <laughs> the sooner the better as a horde. So anyway, that was a long-winded response. But no, I do not uh, recommend trying to go Shinto. The, uh, the small benefit you get for it is not worth the effort. However, because of how Confucian works you know, with the tolerance, um, going to Confucian to get pretty much full religious unity with everything in the, religious, in the Eastern religious group without converting anything is actually pretty solid. So that's what my plans are right now. I might still go Sunni though, we'll see. Okay, my boiler, boiler questions continue. On a scale from Civ slash fiction to mind rate by boil of worms, how excited are you about the new totally not Alpha Centauri Civ game? <laughs> I don't know. I, I have mixed feelings because um, the initial Civ 5 release was so sour to me. And it was so poorly done that I I really didn't give the game a fair chance later uh, because of it. I mean, it was just in a bad state. Oh yeah, and in this war I'm also fighting Ayutthaya, but I mean, it's not going to be very different from the Chagatai plus Ming war. So you know, the tactics from last video will apply here anyway. But yeah, Civ 5 release was really bad. Civ 5 got progressively better over time and added a lot of new features. And I just never really got into it the same way that I did with Civ 4, to say the least. I mean, Civ 4 is kind of like what I've done with EU 4 here, where I've put in like a thousand hours in way too short amount of time and days. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I don't have the same expertise in Civ 5 at any point as I had in Civ 4 at the peak of my time playing it. Um, but certainly, I, I'm looking forward to that, because between using a similar engine or probably the same engine, and yeah, having better computer hardware these days, maybe the turn times won't be quite as brutal. You know, and the mechanics, I, by on looking, might be a little more polished. So I actually am excited, because, you know, the Civ thing is just not something I've done in a while. So yeah, perhaps uh, Beyond Earth, unlike uh, Civ 4, is reasonably likely in the future, although that will conflict with this, another thing I might be doing around that time. Alright, continuing on on the Poiler Boiler's questions list. How important are pretty borders to you? Just... <laughs> no, I'm not one of those guys. I, I don't care about uh, pretty borders too much. Although to me, owning absolutely everything looks pretty gorgeous. So it all depends on the context, I suppose. But I'm willing to do some rather sacrilegious things in the name of improving the strength of my empire. Uh, especially if you are a pagan in Africa. I never really showed this. Because I was, it kind of sucked when I did the Benin playthrough. Uh, as in, like, I sucked very badly compared to now. But all that aside, you can um, juggle your vassals such that no one vassal is too powerful and give away difficult religious provinces while you're trying to stay pagan to eventually become uh, Christian. So I've had some really awesome looking stuff as Congo where it's like a rainbow smattering of different sub-Saharan vassal bullcrap and you know what that looks just fine to me especially because i know it bothers other people who look at it like i'm playing a friendly multiplayer game with a couple of guys and they look down there and they're like oh god what have you done and you know in my head i'm just like troll lol, lol, lol. so no no i don't really care about pretty borders a great deal other than using the lack of them to uh bother others 
but that's just how I roll, I guess. Okay. Uh, final question from Poiler Boiler. Mandatory. When is Hom 5 returning? Yes. A moment ago, I was referencing a conflicting game. Um, I'm still going to be playing EU in the foreseeable future. I expect late summer to fall, and, uh, you know, in the, in the interest of fairness, let's say, uh, fall, just to be safe for when it comes to going back to HOM 5. Uh, HOM is something that I'm pretty cyclical with. Once I get in the mood for it, I tend to marathon run Heroes of Might and Magic. And so, like, once I get started, there's a good chance I'll chunk through, like, an entire expansion campaign set, assuming that I haven't rusted to the point where I can't handle it, because I hear they're a little bit harder, as most expansion campaigns are. And I don't know about, like, I at least had some idea of what was going on in the first campaigns, because I played through with them on easy, like, six years ago. But now, uh, like, we're going into char uncharted territory for me, and I'm still going to try and do it on heroic, so I'll probably get pasted. Uh, but that aside, you know, assuming that I'm even capable of doing it without making a complete idiot of myself, um, and assuming I haven't rusted beyond repair, I still need to be in that mood, that hero's mood where you, you marathon it for videos. And it, I, it just has to be the right time, man. I, I, I loved those, I love all my heroes' let's plays. You know, I, in some ways, I think I did better with them than my Civ let's plays, even though I'm more well known for Civ, perhaps. I really enjoyed uh, both Heroes 3, the entire run through with that, and the the Hom 5 stuff on Heroic. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to return to it. I would expect by this fall rather than summer, but, you know, I might get in the mood over the summer, and if I do, certainly I will record it rather than not record it. <laughs> and that will, be a, that will start up a rather long marathon run once again. So, th that's the best I can answer that question for an exact time frame. Uh, okay, uh, next question from uh, Stephen Hussey. I guess I'm going from bottom to top for some reason. Well, I guess that is in uh, chronological order, oldest to newest, as I continue to loot Ming. Ming is so generous. For a beginner, what is the best way to go about learning this game? Most people say play a European Civ, but they seem a bit too standard. Also, what are the basic skills that a beginner should learn when getting into this? Oh, man. Now I know what developers feel like when you avoid asking them yes or no questions. <laughs> That's pretty loaded, and I don't have that long in the video left, do I? Um, well, for me, I asked my friend Peach Rocks, who gave this to me as a gift. Thank you, by the way, Peach Rocks. Um, but I asked him, hey, what's the worst possible start in the game? And he told me Chimu, so I played Chimu and got my uh, butt handed to me really badly multiple times while just getting used to the menu items. I hadn't even gone through the tutorial. Uh, for learning the game, I don't think it matters a whole lot. Um, pick a nation that's at least near other nations so you can do diplomacy, unless you're really not familiar with the interface at all. Uh, pick a nation that looks appealing to you, and you know, try out your diplomatic options, you know, get you a feel for the controls, mess around with war and stuff, um, and you'll you'll get a feel for the game that way. I don't really think starting nation matters a whole lot. Certainly, if you want an easy experience, then the likes of Portugal uh, would be really easy to play. But, you yeah, that's not everyone's cup of tea, even on a first run-through. I didn't want an easy game my first run-through. I wanted to get right into the thick of it, so it just depends on your personality. As for basic skills, um, I would recommend reading through the mechanics on the wiki and having an understanding of them. Know what the unit pips are for you know each tech. Uh, understand how important each tech is, especially military tactics, um, and the, how they buff generals in 1.6, that kind of stuff. Definitely understand how combat works, um, and try to balance your expansion against, you know, like being able to afford advisors and stuff. But really, the basics is, are just something you can read on the wiki. And, and, you know, not just that, but I, I don't know how to describe it, because there's so many things to learn with this game. You know, and some mechanics are very deep versus not, but the the problem that most people run into is they really don't understand what wins or loses in war. And you can get a feel for it watching me, but you don't really get an understanding until you play of, uh, of this stuff. Because a lot of stuff I just do without thinking. Like, I'll tack up a attack and then attack with the lead. Or I'll get a new unit and attack with the lead. That kind of stuff can really help. But so does manipulating allies. And diplomacy is very important in this game, even in single player. And oh my gosh, if you're in multiplayer, 
diplomacy even takes a further front seat. It's like on the hood or something, standing outside the court, just jumping up and down on you. <laughs> the multiplayer diplomacy is great. And ah, yes, in video here, I am, uh, I am going to vassal Diviat after kicking Ayufai out of the war with white peace. So yeah, I would say just jump right in, start playing. If you don't understand something, look it up on the wiki, and then uh, keep going until you get to the next thing you don't understand. And, uh, you know, just just go from there uh, and enjoy the ride. Um, certainly, this game is pretty enjoyable, especially as you're just learning it and taking in the, the whole uh, pacing of it and theme and everything. Once you have a more hardcore understanding of the mechanics, you know, mileage may vary. But uh, just getting into the game casual can be really fun. So I would re recommend going about it that way. I mean, there's some mechanics that are pretty esoteric and hidden that'll catch you off guard and there's nothing you can do about it. I'm still learning stuff. For example, the war score scaling change is new to 1.6, and that screwed me in uh, this playthrough, and I had no idea it was coming. So, you know, you just have to take it with a grain of salt when it comes to that. But I would still recommend this game as long as you don't get too hung up on uh, some of its flaws. It's a, it's a flawed title, but a good one to enjoy, uh, much like all the other modern strategy games I've played, unfortunately. Even Civ 4 had its share of flaws. Quite a few, in fact. So... Try it out, see how it is, and uh, yeah, just jump right in and look things up when you're having trouble. And certainly if you post on the forum, uh, people will help you out as well. But, uh, and, you know, I'm pretty frequent on that forum right now, uh, Paradox Plaza. <laughs> and the, uh, the remaining question, or remaining stuff on my channel comments are not questions, but rather uh, a smiley face from Person Man, who's uh, one of the guys I run multiplayer games with. And then uh, <laughs> an interesting comment from Charlie Bit Games. Glad I found your channel is looking for someone so similar in talent as DDR Jake. <laughs> Man, I don't know about that one, Charlie. Um, I, I would say that I'm not quite at the level of DDR Jake yet, and I would recommend both his uh, stream and his channel as well for uh, Europa Universalis 4. Just like me, he embraces the cheese. Um, he he calls them the dark arts, you know, rather than the me and cheese theme. But you know, it, it's it's two different names for the same thing. A brilliant mind, but you know, he has a lot more experience with Europa and how old mechanics you know, blend into new ones with Europa, and really knows the the game pretty well inside and out, and has a really sound grasp of the basic skills of the game as well. You know, unit micro control and all that. I mean, everyone makes mistakes, but he's solid. And although I feel like I have a pretty good mastery of this game now, certainly my knowledge and skill base in this game is still growing. So I, <laughs> I wouldn't go so far as to say that I could uh, win the Three Mountains achievement just yet. But, you know, I do, you know, give me a half a year, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. But I, I think that's a little premature. But I, I appreciate the vote of confidence all the same. <laughs> okay, and that does take care of all the comments. So the only thing that's left here is uh, the actual gameplay itself. And because we're coming up on the end of the video here, I have maybe three, four minutes left, and we are just carpet sieging Ming at this point, uh, I guess I can go over some basic stuff, um, just arbitrarily picking something to go over. If you are fighting a much larger enemy like this, you really can't take an aggressive posturing too early without risking a lot, getting stack wiped or getting shattered and having it become very costly. So what you'll see frequently see me do is either get a shattered retreat and then hang out on the borders, maybe siege out one province, maybe. Or um, once you've done enough damage, then you can go in and chase them. But you still don't want to try and carpet them because they're too large. They can train up another 10, 20, 30 units on you and attack your army while you're carpeted and start wiping your stacks. So I like to leave behind some siege stacks, but keep a smaller stack around to hunt for newly trained units. And you're seeing me do that with Ming here, although at this point I'm negotiating for peace. But throughout this video, you know, I was very gradual with the siege at first, not committing too many trips to that, and really trying to engage the AI stacks and shatter them backwards without getting my sieging stacks white. And then once you have them weak enough, you basically just run around the territory looking for newly trained units and kill them, uh, stack wipe them before they can consolidate. As far as I can tell, that's the best way to actually ultimately carpet out a very large nation. Uh, certainly, if you can just get by on war score and war goal alone, then you don't have to carpet them. And uh, in previous uh, patches, the 
larger nations were scaled down so that each individual province costed less. You could get a lot out of that. But the way it's working right now, that's no longer the case. And I guess they're replacing that with administrative efficiency so that you can take a whole lot more when you get to higher tech later in the game. I'm not impressed by that change. It has severe balance changes that once again affect um, Europe favorably and the rest of the world less favorably, as Europe is by far the most likely area of the world to have strong administrative technology at the end of the game. So I'm a little bit disappointed by that, but I don't think it'll stop us from getting the achievement, even as Mongolia. Although certainly, uh, the Great Khan, if you want to get it easily, don't pick Mongolia. Just go with Golden Horde and, and uh, ease your way through it. Golden Horde's not that bad once you're used to Horde mechanics. But uh, Mongolia, yeah, it can be a little rough. It's poor, you have to have a firm grasp of looting, you have to be comfortable with knowing when to attack the AI versus not when it's sieging you, and you have to be comfortable with consistently beating opponents with larger forces than you have, especially early, and then turning the tables, because I will be fighting Muscovy likely with superior numbers, but uh, they'll be higher in tech. But that about does it for this video, viewers. I will see you next time. Enjoy the last couple seconds of the video. The Mian team, signing off.